Hello sewing friends and welcome back. This is part two of my corset making journey. Today we're going to be discussing the actual construction of my corset using the pattern that we made, that I made in the last video. So again, just a disclaimer, I am not a professional. I have, this is the first corset I've ever made and I have no idea what I'm doing, but I thought it would still make a really good series. I definitely learned something from this and hopefully someone else will learn something as well. So just in case you didn't see my last video, I am making a corset from a pattern taken out of this book, Corsets and Crinolines by Nora Waugh. I highly recommend this book. I certainly hope I say <laughs> Nora's last name correctly. I highly recommend this book. I think it's great. I think it has a really good overview of structured garments moving forward from about the 1500s. Structured undergarments, I should say. Um, so I think this book is great and I think you should check it out if this is something you're interested in. Hit myself in the face. <laughs> I do this too often. When making my corset, I found a great supply company called Metro Fabrics here in Victoria, I think in Melbourne, um, where I actually purchased all of my supplies. So I picked up some corsetry cotil, um, in it's a herring, it's a herringbone cotil. So hopefully you can see these like vertical stripes running down the fabric um, with a bit of a herringbone print. After making a corset, do I necessarily recommend using corsetry cotil? Possibly not. <laughs> so I don't think that you need cotil in order to make a well-structured corset. You do need fabric that is going to be very stiff and not stretch, but you, there are other materials that you could use that are not going, that are going to go through your machine much better than this went through mine. This was such a struggle to sew with. I think partially because I was really worried about my needle breaking. Um, I used the toughest, thickest needle I had and that was probably not the best idea, but I was still terrified that it was going to break. So a seam was me like hand cranking the needle through half the time and it took so long. So, I do think you can get a really fantastic corset without using cotille, though it is the recommended fabric. There are, I'm actually going to link um, you guys below a ton of different corset tree resources because even just following um, someone whose name I can't remember, I'll put them down below on Instagram, I have learned so much about corset tree and I really wish I had actually found this person before I started making my own because I would have made some different decisions. But anyway, I picked this cotille up from Metro Fabrics. I also picked up my other supplies like spiral steel boning and cotton um, casing for bones, um, all on Metro Fabrics as well. I also picked up my, I forget what they're called, boning caps on there. I actually don't think I'm talking about boning in this video, but just while I'm here, I, so when you buy boning, unless you buy it in pre-cut lengths, you need to cut it yourself. Um, so I actually contacted my dad because my dad is a very handy person. He's a plumber um, and he dabbles in mechanics on the weekend, well dabbles, he is an incredible mechanic. He basically works on cars on his weekends. Um, so I reached out to him, I sent him photos of the boning and I was like, hey, do you have anything that would cut this? And he gave me these, which are little cutty plier things. Uh, I will get the proper name for them from my dad. Um, and he lent me these and these worked wonders. So instead of buying steel boning or boning um, scissors or cutters, from that would have cost me like 60 bucks I just got these from my dad so if you have a handy person in your life please ask them <laughs> for like heavy duty tools before you go buying them yourself because who knows they might just be able to help you that being said I still got like a massive blister from cutting through all the steel bones it took a while and it was not my favorite activity but like I said, we're not actually talking about boning in this video. We're going to be talking about the construction of a corset and how I went from a pattern to having most of a corset. 
I also picked up my eyelets from Metro Fabrics. So they really had everything that I needed um, in order to build, in order to build a corset. The only additional things I needed to pick up were of course some thread and my heavy duty needles um, and some satis, uh, satin bias binding there we go and some waste tape from spotlight and then i was ready to go so i'm going to take you guys through the construction process for this video next video i will be showing you guys how i finished my corset basically so if you want to see how i made the bulk of my corset please keep watching uh like if you enjoyed if you have any questions or comments or advice please put them in the comments down below because I would love to hear um, what you guys have to say. Uh, additionally, I would love to hear what projects you're working on at the moment. So share them down below as well. Let's get going. I started by cutting my pattern out of my cotille. I didn't have many issues with the rotary cutter. Um, it went through the fabric just fine, despite how stiff this cotille was. Um, I just had to press a little bit harder and it worked really well. So remembering that the pattern that I made only makes up half of my corset, I already needed to cut out double of everything. And then on top of that, I decided to make my corset two layers. That way I could sandwich boning channels in between um, and just make it a little bit more sturdy. To be honest, it made sense at the time. I'm pretty sure I could have gone with the single layer, um, but this made a great deal of sense in my mind. And again, I this is my first corset, so I don't have a lot of justification for why I cut out two layers. But I did. So I ended up with four of everything. I did also make certain to label all of my pattern pieces as I cut them. Uh, just that way I didn't lose track of anything. Sometimes you can get away with not labeling things um, because you can tell by the shape of each pattern piece. But I labeled these all and I kept them in order. That way I didn't mix anything up. Cutting everything out took a little bit longer than anticipated because of how thick the fabric was and how much I had to press down with my rotary cutter, but eventually I got there and then I started sewing my pattern pieces together, which seems really strange to me. Um, there are definitely markings you can make, like marking off the waistline to act as balance points, but because I really didn't know too much about corset making and I really wasn't too sure where my waistline would be on this one, I just kind of went for it. I started out by sewing the two layers of my back pieces together at the centre back seam, which is kind of a weird thing to say being that they won't be joined, um, but is kind of the best description I can give here. So basically I'm sewing them here, that way when I turn my fabric the other way and enclose the seam, I'll have a clean finish for the back edge of my corset and it will also help me set up boning channels and my eyelet placement later on. I hope I described that in a way that makes sense and hopefully you'll see it come together later on in the video. I then went ahead and sewed all of my front pieces together at the centre front seam. So sewing all four layers of cotille kind of sandwiched together, that way I could separate them into the two halves and have my front boning channels created as well. This isn't entirely typical, normally you would sew in a front busk when you do your centre front portions, but I wasn't including a busk in this corset because I wanted a really smooth front and I just wanted it to lace up in the back. In retrospect, having worn this a few times, it would have been so much easier if this had a front busk. So definitely something for you to consider. If you don't need to remove a busk, it is probably a lot easier just to keep it in. That being said, I definitely think that this is a good reminder that you can put a closure anywhere in a corset. You can have it front lacing, back lacing. There are examples of side lacing corsets probably for 
pregnant women. Um, so there is a lot of customization that you can do with the corset. So you definitely don't have to conform to the idea of a front busk and back lacing if you don't want to. And finally, once I had finished sewing together the layers of my back pieces, I trimmed down my seam allowance. Honestly, you probably don't need to do this and I felt like it made it a little bit harder to insert my boning um, later on. So definitely an optional step there. So hopefully what I've just described is a little bit clearer in this shot. You can see I'm pressing completely open one of my back pieces and I've sewn my two layers together here. I'm kind of creating a bit of a French seam in a way just to finish off this very back edge. So you can see now I've folded it so that my right sides are facing outwards and that seam that I've created is completely enclosed. This edge is essentially going to be the very back edge of my corset and is going to lace together with the other back edge in order to close my corset. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now. Because the cotille is so thick and so stiff, I am pressing it really, really well. And I'm also using my sleeve, um, my sleeve ham, I suppose they're called, to kind of hold down on the pressed edge, just to kind of get it a little bit smoother and crisper. As for my front pieces, these are now joined together and I'm just going to completely press down my center front seam. I am not trimming any of my seam allowances at all for the remainder of the corset because these are actually going to help form my boning channels later on, which is 100% a mistake, um, I think, but it was definitely the choice that I made at the time. Now that I have my back edges all prepped, I can set them up to insert boning channels and create space for my eyelets. So basically starting from the very back edge, which just to be clear, this is going to be the part that laces up with my other back edge and nothing else is going to be sewn onto here. So starting from my very center back I created a quarter inch um, mark for my boning channel. I left a half inch gap for the eyelets that I was using and then I created a second quarter inch boning channel mark. So essentially wherever you have a lacing closure on a corset you want to have two boning channels on either side of your eyelets to provide them with support and structure and that's what I'm marking down here. I then grabbed my four layers of my front front side pieces. I labeled them as such so I didn't get confused um, as to which connected to the center front and which connected to the side piece. So these are going to be sewn on to my center front piece. I could not pin through these layers of cotille. So definitely if you have sewing clips in order to attach your fabric, that is what I would recommend using as opposed to trying to pin through them because I had zero luck doing that. I just kind of winged it and it did work out really well. So that is, at least is good. The final step for my back pieces involved sewing my back boning channels, again leaving space for my eyelets. So I created my boning channels by sewing straight through my two layers of cotille um, and then basically inserted my bones straight through the middle of them. I know that this is not the only way to create boning channels, you can use a whole separate um, casing for boning channels and sew them onto the fabric instead. Um, to be honest, this is one of the areas where I get a little bit confused because um, the way I've inserted boning makes attaching a waste tape later on much more difficult but I don't know how I should have done it instead. So this is definitely one of those areas where I would suggest doing a little bit of research uh, for yourself instead of necessarily doing what I'm doing here. But for the sake of learning, um, and just in case it's not completely horrible, this is what I did. 
Once I had sewn my boning channels into my two centre back pieces, I put these aside for a while and I will come back to them later. But for now, we're going to get started on sewing the rest of the corset together. So I started by attaching my front front side pieces to my two centre front side pieces. This was a very slow process because again I couldn't pin anything together so it did require a little bit of forethought to kind of match up where the pieces were stopping and starting which was pretty much mostly due to the fact that I didn't grade down any of my seam allowances or grade up any of my seam allowances when I changed the sizing of my corset pattern. I just left them as they were which I will talk about later. Um, it's not the end of the world, I don't think. <laughs> Someone might be just gritting their teeth over this. But also, I was terrified that I was going to break a pin through this entire process. This cotille was so thick and so stiff um, that I was I went really, really slowly and I used my hand crank on my machine a lot just to avoid breaking anything. Um, I really didn't want <laughs> any needles breaking on me because I'm pretty sure if they tried to break through the cotille they would also maybe just shatter, which is a bit of an irrational fear, I know, but also I've had needles break on me um, while I was sewing before and it's not a pleasant experience and it is something that does make me a little bit anxious. Of course at each step I took the time to press down my seams um, and you can already see the corset taking shape here which is pretty cool. I did also find that pressing the seams down did make the corset a little bit more workable each time because heat does soften cotille quite a bit. Um, so definitely made the whole thing much more manageable. And then I just continued on. I attached each new panel to the bulk of my corset on each side. So from here I attached my front side side piece. <laughs> um, and then I attached my side pieces and finally my back side pieces before I could move on to dealing with my back pieces once more. At each step I would iron everything down really flat and smooth to the best that I could. Um, I didn't worry about any of my boning channels at this point, that will come a little bit later.
Once I had the bulk of my corset all sewn together and pressed, I could move back to my very back pieces. Now you'll note that they are not currently attached to the corset because I thought it would be easier to work with them while they were still free floating. And the first thing I'm going to do is start attaching my eyelets. So I have everything marked out on my original fabric pattern pieces, but because I have extended them upwards and downwards I'm also going to add two extra eyelet holes one to the top and one to the bottom using similar spacing to what's already there at least on the outer edges because as you go towards the middle of the piece the eyelets become a bit closer together to deal with the additional tension and once I had them all marked out I could start attaching them so I did purchase an eyelet kit for this particular uh, project and I thought it came with everything I needed because it mentioned it came with an additional tool and the additional tool is just used to close the eyelets so that they actually stay in place which I have to say I feel like it's not additional if it's required to attach the eyelets but maybe I, I'm just being ridiculous um, but basically, it didn't come with anything to actually cut open the eyelet holes in the first place. So I just did that with scissors and tried to approximate the right size, but not too big. So that the eyelet, when hammered down, completely covered um, the cut edges that I had created. Once I had cut a hole into the fabric, I could actually attach my eyelet. So I used the bottom half of my eyelet tool to balance the main portion of my eyelet um, underneath my corset. Then on the other side of my corset, I would slip the little ring that comes with it. It kind of looks like a little washer over the top. And then I would use the second half of the eyelet tool um, to put in the middle of the eyelet and then hammer it down. This causes the edge of the eyelet to fold down and around the ring and basically join the two halves together. Approximately 23 times later and I was all done with my eyelets and ready to go. To reduce the bulk of the corset that I was trying to feed through my machine, I decided to sew down the majority of my boning channels before I attached my final back pieces. And basically the way I did this was I sewed down all of my seam allowances that I had left in my corset to act as boning channels. There were a couple of places with bigger panels where I just sewed the boning channels through my two layers of cotille, but for the most part they were the original seam allowances. I will note again that you are potentially supposed to insert your waist tape before this step, um, but I'm not 100% sure. I do need to do some more research on this, so my apologies for not being clear on these steps. Once again, I highly recommend doing your own research and checking out some of the resources that I link below um, just to get your own footings on these construction steps. I was not perfect when sewing these down either. I did end up with some lumps and bumps, um, even though when you're sewing down your boning channels and your corset, um, when you're stitching your corset together in general, you are supposed to try and eliminate the amount of wrinkling as much as possible. Um, I certainly did not achieve that, but also trying to be a little bit gentle to myself on this one as it was the first ever proper corset that I have made aside from like the two mock-ups that I made to get to this point. So definitely a learning process. I also love that I bought cotton casing for my boning channels and I never even used it because I decided to do it this way. Maybe next time. Once I had all of my boning channels sewn down, I gave everything a really good press to try and eliminate some of that wrinkling. Um, again, it didn't all come out, but it certainly helped as well. And you can really see so much of the shape in the corset already. Um, again, it's bones, despite what we've 
been told a lot. Bones don't really lend a corset its shape. They really provide um, structure and support for the corset. It's really the cut of the panels that provide it with shape um, and you can definitely see that here. Once I had everything sewn and pressed, it was finally time to attach my back panels. I was just quite cautious with these because they did have eyelets in them and I just didn't want to hit anything. And again, just removing these last couple of inches from my corset did make it much easier to maneuver through the machine, particularly because it is such a stiff fabric. Like I found that it was getting caught on shelves and things as I was trying to push it through the machine and I would constantly have to like rejig the whole thing so that it would go through a bit more smoothly. A final press for these back seams as well and then I am also going to sew these final seam allowances down as even more boning channels. I ended up with about 34 boning channels in this corset and that I don't think is even a lot compared to other corsets like they're definitely not that closely spaced compared to others I have seen. Um, I purchased about 10 meters of spiral steel boning for this corset and it ended up being just enough. I definitely used more than I thought for this one. So I mentioned before that I didn't grade any of the seam allowances uh, for my updated corset pattern, which basically just involves kind of matching the edges a little bit more. So when you sew them together, they start and end together. I didn't do that so my final steps for this video involved just trimming down some of those uneven edges and making the corset a little bit more smooth um, particularly as I am about to sew some bias binding into it oh and we got a brief glimpse of Claudia she's always around uh, much more so than Fatty who just likes to find a comfy chair to sleep on and ignore the world and that is how I made the bulk of my corset. So next video, we're going to get in on the boning, uh, the binding of the edges and the general finishing touches of my corset, which I should probably finish in order to share with you guys that video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I'm also planning on making a what I learnt during my corset adventure video, which will make up part four of this series. So if you guys had any questions you'd like me to answer for that video, just leave them down below. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.